Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That was a wonderful testimony. Like in Psalms 104, it says, Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Praise the Lord. So, the other day, we were uh, reading uh, Psalms 104. We were uh, meditating on Psalms 104. And that was a very nice uh, psalm. So, I wanted to just uh, pick a few verses from there. Psalm... Psalm 104 basically uh, talks about, it goes along with Genesis, you know, the initial chapters of Genesis. So it, it reflects on how God has created the world, you know, how God has created, you know, so many wonderful things and God has created us, right? And uh, Psalm 104, 24 says, how many are your works, Lord? In wisdom, you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. And then it goes on. And then, you know, later it says, it reflects on how we are dependent on God. The verse 27 says, All creatures look to you to give them food, give them their food at proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the, of the ground. And verse 31 says, May the glory of the Lord endure forever May the Lord rejoice in his works. You know, may the Lord rejoice in his works. So we know that when we look back in Genesis, again, you know, Genesis recounts how God has created the world. And at one point, you know, man has, you know, fallen. You know, Adam has fallen. And we have that fallen nature. And, you know, as the human beings continue to you know evolve god sees that you know they're they're very sinful and they're keeping on sinning however much god has mercy on them they're continuing to sin and god in genesis 6 it says god regretted that he created human beings and here psalmist says may the glory of the lord endure forever May the Lord rejoice in his works, you know, instead of regretting. And how can that happen, right? And that can happen quite the opposite way. Like if, if we keep on sinning and sinning and sinning, you know, God, we know that God regretted in Genesis 6. And on the other hand, you know, if we refrain from sinning, you know, between that something beautiful happened between Genesis 6 and now, which is Jesus Christ came and took away our sins, praise the Lord. And right now, we have that choice. We have the grace from Jesus Christ. And through our baptism, we can resist sin. And we can, you know, let this psalm verse be fulfilled, which is, may the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. And... Uh, you know, like the song said just just now. You know what? Do you guys re remember? The kids are not here. The do you guys remember the purpose of our creation? Right? We just sang, "I will worship you with all of my heart. I will seek your face, and I will serve you, Lord, so that we will reach heaven." You know that kind of summarizes our purpose, God's creation, and you know, and. Uh, Going back, this, what is the season we are going to just enter, right? Th that's a season of Lent, we all know. Next Wednesday, we will go into Ash Wednesday. And this season of Lent is, you know, the Catholic Church, this is a beautiful tradition. Why? Because that, in this season, we can take 
a look into ourselves. You know, at an individual level, we can look into ourselves. Where do we stand? Is God pleased with how we are living? We can take a look into our interior selves you know, from a family point of view, from a society point of view. At every level, we can look internally and evaluate, you know, where do we stand? So that is the beautiful season of Lent. And uh, one thing is there. You know, when we look back, when we look into ourselves, there is, you know, we, uh, due to our human nature, we might not see the sins, you know, that we, uh, uh, we have. That is, we might be blind to our, you know, sins. Do you, do you have that picture, uh, Sonnet? So, you know, I wanted to show a, a picture. This is a, just a cartoon, okay? It's a famous cartoon from Calvin and Hobbes, okay? So, uh, Calvin, who is a child, he's, he's look at the, it's, it's in the context of New Year, but we can take it and apply it to our Lent also. So, Calvin is saying, resolution is me. Why do I need to change? Just what are you implying? That I need to change? Well, buddy, as far as I'm concerned, I'm perfect the way I am. Right? It's, it's a funny way of showing that we have this tendency, that's good enough, that the, we have this tendency to be blind to our sins. Uh, we need the grace of God even to, you know, see our sins. And uh, there is this, I've, I've heard this in a talk, there is this beautiful um, character that we see that the more holier you are, the more or you have the ability with the grace to see your sins. That's why we know that, you know, the popes, they have this uh, habit of even confessing, you know, every single day or every other day. Whereas if you look at people who are, you know, habitual sinners who are, you know, a little away from the Lord, they don't go to confession at all. So the people who need the confession the most do not confess, and the people who are relatively closer to God are able to see even the minutest sins, and they go for confession even more, right? So that's a contradiction, but that is the nature, that is our human nature. And, uh, you know, you know, at this point, we are also, you know, we have some more days before we start Lent. We also, you know, reflect on what do we need to do for Lent, right? So, there are three buckets. So one, you know that there is three buckets, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So the human nature, because of the human nature, like we reflect at night now, we have this tendency. So we should always pick things that, you know, the, the fasting, from the fasting bucket. If you want to just, you know, not do anything for uh, do per certain things in the season of Lent, we should not use it as, you know, to test whether I can do it or not, you know. Oh, I will uh, eat only very little during the season of Lent, you know. I, that was just an example. Or um, I will do something really, really hard to check whether I can do it or not, you know. We should always pick things that, you know, after our own meditation, after looking internally, after, you know, to see which are the things that are keeping away, keeping us away from God. If there is, if you, if we have a tendency to eat more, you know, snacking a lot, uh, eating very delicious things for the pleasure of it, then that might be the thing that you might want to, you know, um, what do you say, not do. Whereas if you have, if you're, uh, you know, too attached to social media, internet, um, you know, anything, you look within and see if that is taking your precious time or resources and, you know, away from the Lord, maybe that might be the thing that you need. So there is that fasting bucket, right? So, uh, like in Romans 7, 16, 18 onwards, you know, uh, 
St. Paul reflects, you know, our inability. There are two, there are various ways we uh, go away from the Lord and fall into sin. One is actually uh, ignorance. You know, we do not know what is sin. Like, you know, Calvin said, you know, he doesn't know what is keeping him away from the truth, right, from God. So once we know what is right and what is wrong clearly, sometimes we cannot do. That is what St. Paul reflects, that I uh, do not do the good that I wish to do, I want to do, but I do the evil that I do not want to do. You know, he, he's reflecting on the inability, the incapacity to choose that, you know. But we are all, that is the human nature. The human nature basically, although we are created in the image and likeness of God, after we fell down, we, ha we have that tendency to keep on sinning, okay? But by we, we are all Christians, we have got the blessing of baptism. And now we have the grace with which we can actually resist the sin, okay? So we have that constant fight between the hum our human nature, the fallen nature, and we have the grace of Christ on the other side, but God has also given us the free will. We have to, with our act of will, choose to do that good thing. And the more you do, the more you do, it develops what you call virtues. Once you have a virtue, our nature automatically selects the good. You can say, take, um, it's similar to how, you know, they say that the aeroplane uh, has the highest resistance when it climbs, when it is closer to earth. Because the air is more, the gravity is more, the higher you go, the easier it is to fly. So it's similar to that in our spiritual life as well. The, you know, the, to resist sin when we are, you know, a little away from God, it is harder. But once you try with the grace of God, you try and try, you build virtues, then doing the good comes more easily. You know, so this is also, uh, you know, tying back when we reflect on what do we need to do for Lent. We have to choose things that can help us build virtues. You know, what are the virtues that are really needed for us in our, you know, in our call, in our family life, in our work, uh, what are we struggling with? So we have to choose things that will, you know, help us build, you know, make us more holy. So, yeah, this is also like, you know, uh, Father Matthew always compares this to athletes, you know, training. So Lent is also a time of training in our spiritual life. So if, you know, when, once a team, once a, like, let's say a high school team starts to practice, right? The season, when the season starts, they have to, you know, practice a lot because the people who are not really trained, the people whose muscles are not ready, you know, they, when they try to run, they may not be fast. Their leg will not move as their mind wants it to move. But the more you practice, the more you practice, the harder you pr practice, even though your mind doesn't want to practice, you know, they just want to, you know, sleep more, you know, do whatever they want. But the more you practice, the game becomes easier. When you go for the game, it will become easier. So, you know, that is our choice. So, the Lent is a beautiful tradition where we can practice those things, you know, practice those virtues, so that when we go back into the real, you know, world, we can actually practice them, you know. Uh, when we reflect, you know, that about that training, right, um, we look back into the life of the Israelites. So Israelites, we know that, you know, Old Testament always has uh, like a symbol of what happens right now. So uh, the Israelites were saved by God from slavery, right? And then God took them through the Red Sea 
and brought to the land of Canaan the first time. So what happened? Do you guys remember what happened when God said, okay, you can enter that. There are people there. You have to fight them and then you can enter that and that land is yours. So they send a set of 12 spies and then they'll go see there are big giants and they think that they cannot fight them. Right? And uh, what happens is they don't enter. They'll go back to the wilderness. They'll roam around for, you know, several years, 40 years, and then come back to capture the, the land. So the thing is, sometimes we have, when we look into our own lives, we have to be ready to sometimes look at those sins that seem unsurmountable. Some uh, thing that you think, you know, this is too hard, you know, I'll just live a normal life like everybody. But we are set apart. We, have, we are called to be holy in a generation which may not be so. So even when we think the certain things are really hard, we have to trust in God that with his help we can surmount everything. We can be holy. We can be saints. It is not something that is impossible. So, you know, unlike the Israelites who did not trust, because God, we know that God, the Old Testament, you know, keeps again and again saying that God is a warrior. Okay, God fights for us, Exodus 14, 14 says. You just have to be still. We, we have to take that step. And once you trust, the God will fight for us. He will lead you through. Right? So, that is what we also have to do. You know, in this Lent, when, when we reflect, when we tackle our own, you know, weaknesses, we have to trust that God will lead us through. You know, towards that sainthood, towards that holiness that seems sometimes, un, you know, insurmountable, right? So, that is also, you know, we have to reflect on that to help when we are, you know, preparing ourselves for Lent, we have to trust that, you know, let's say, I want to do, read Bible for, you know, half an hour or something in our busy schedules. Is that possible? You know, in a, it may not be. Like, when you look back, it may not seem that uh, we will be able to do, but we have to trust that we will be able to do. We, you know, we'll organize other things so that we will find that time. You have to make time. You know, how is our, you know, in our lives? It might seem that there is, you know, it's so too, too hectic, right? But we have to take that step to, you know, make time for God. You know, there is, you know, making time for God reminds me of another story, right? So there was this man who thought he was, you know, he was doing everything right, like the Pharisee. And then he went to like a wise man and he was saying, you know, oh, I will do this, this, I'm, you know, I want to find God, uh, you know, by trying hard or whatever, but his life is very busy. So this uh, wise man, what he was doing is he was, you know, f giving him some coffee and in his cup, he filled the coffee. It's a filled cup, cup. And then he kept on pouring, kept on pouring, pouring. And the coffee is going down. First, the man thought, oh, he, you know, he's an old guy. He's not realizing that it's full. Then he becomes angry. It's like falling everywhere. And then he says, stop. It's like full. How can you put anything into this cup, which is already full? Then the wise man doesn't say. And then, you know, he'll prompt him to think what he said. And then he understands that to get God, you know, to receive God's blessing, to do the things that God wants, sometimes we have to do an emptying. We have to look in our own lives, our own heart. You know, is, it, is there space for God? Or is it like filled with so many other things that God doesn't have space? Right? So, yeah. So that, that's another uh, thing I wanted to say. So, 
once you know another thing that we want uh, we see in in the old testament is uh, that famous line if you hear god's voice today if today you hear god's voice harden not your hearts right so there is that thing of hardening of the heart as well sometimes you know and typically uh, this hardening of heart typically comes sometimes from wounds our own past lives our experiences and sometimes from the world itself you know the nature of the world our own fallen nature that hardened heart is there uh, the problem with the hardening of heart is once your your heart is hardened you hear something good you even some sometimes you see your mistakes you say you know this is how it is i live with it you know it, it is very common i remember uh, from my old days i don't hear that very often nowadays here but uh, i used to hear that you know we are not saints to do this you know that is uh, to i'll drink a little bit because you know it's this normal to do we i am not a saint i don't know if you have heard that reasoning but uh, it was very common when i was in back in india in you know in in our language you say oh nya veliya puniyalam onnum alla you know it's in malayalam you know in indian language it basically says uh, i am not a saint you know it's only for saints but but the point is that hardening of the heart so we should not we have to be very careful and with god's grace like in ezekiel with god's grace he will if if even if our heart is hardened with our own you know with the wounds that we have in the past in our childhood if you are if it is hardened he will give us a new heart all we have to do is pray we open you know, we try hard we go kneel before the lord he will soften our hearts the the interesting thing is you know if you look at the spiritual side and physical world there is so much similarity like i was actually googling for hardening of the heart right and there was this article that was so interesting so it says that you know even in you know human beings as we live as we go through uh, our life sometimes we get uh, you know wounds like some it might be high blood pressure or some you know stress in the heart the there is a tendency of the heart to calcify okay calcification is the term that it was using and slowly slowly the heart becomes hardened it becomes calcified like stone and that was very surprising because i have only heard hardening of the heart in you know spiritual terms but actually in the real life also there is that and you, we have to be like we have to be careful uh, to you know in our practices physical practices to so that that doesn't happen you know that what we eat or exercises whatever so similarly in the spiritual life as well you know what we have to be very careful that you know our heart is not hardened so that we when we hear god's voice it will actually enter okay and if it is hardened we can always you know go before the lord who will take away the hard heart and give us a heart of flesh praise the lord and uh, you know finally i just wanted to reflect quickly on while we are preparing the, you know what to do for lent like i said you know we take from those three buckets prayer fasting and alms giving so uh, there are so many prayers that we can do you know we can read the bible that's one thing rosary you know daily rosary if you're not uh, able to do rosary in uh, before this is a good time to try to do a rosary every day we can uh, get the blessings from that and the bless the very good thing about rosary is that you are meditating through the events of christ okay and then if you do if you are like doing your day to day uh, life uh, it's very hectic uh, um, there is this beautiful jesus prayer uh, i'm sure you already know it's, like, it's very simple jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner that's all so that you can repeat you know whenever you have a few seconds you can you know keep praying and you know even that if you don't remember 
you can just say jesus jesus even the name of jesus has so much power to deliver us to take us on the right path praise the lord and then uh, if you are if you are not able to do you know uh, if you are not able to attend holy mass on sundays like on a regular basis this is a great time to start doing that you know attend sunday masses during lent if you are able to do sunday masses and if you're then it's a good time to start attending a few daily mass and if you're already attending a few you know days a week try attending all the days you know daily mass every day and receive god and also be close to god you know look a little bit and go to confession frequently so the good thing like we di discussed before as the more you confess the more you confess regularly god will give you the grace to see even uh, the the minute sin so that you can become more holier as you know go so lent is a beautiful tradition and a time for us to renew ourselves and going to fasting you know uh, why do we why do we usually give up food right or any anything that we um, that we like like we said before the thing is like we when we we know that when we were ch children you know when we want something right we i want the toy it's like you know i want the toy and i want it now right that is the children they want whenever they want something they want it now not later so that is you know and most many of us uh, even though we are adults in many ways we are still children we are grown up but still mentally we have those children's weaknesses so sometimes we have want a food we want it now you know uh, i have a habit of snacking you know i uh, between meals while i'm working i want to eat a little bit uh, some some of you might have it some sometimes it might be coffee you know drink a lot of coffee or i don't know there are there are many uh, things about food itself and the you know we the one practice might be not to say uh, no to something but to completely restrict it you know you say that i am only going to take it at this time of the day so that I, it's not like i want it and i want it now no i'm going to postpone it till that time you know that sacrifice gives us that you know will power within ourselves so that why why is that will power important because that helps us you know in our spiritual journey as well where we have to choose you remember god has given us that free will and to use that act of will to choose you know this will power kind of helps so that is one thing you know you might be uh, if screen time is a challenge for you this is a great time you know uh, to limit the screen time if you are spending like hours and hours on various devices to to limit it you know maybe i will check only the whatsapp or facebook just a few minutes to see if there are important messages but the rest of the time i will keep it away you know we have to reflect on ourselves what is you know what is keeping us what is stealing those precious time that we have to give to god um for children uh, you know from the arm, arms giving part you know for adults we can give you know if you are not able to give tithe uh, it's a good time to start giving your tithe and if you are giving tithe maybe a little bit more you know for uh, various purposes of church poor and people around us and for children if, who probably don't have a lot of money to give you can give uh, from the other two buckets there is the three buckets time talent and treasure right so the treasure is the money so you can maybe give time for your friends who want some help or time with your parents or time with your siblings or the third thing is you can also use your talent to help others you know each of us are blessed with so much talent so that is how you can again you know uh, uh, spend your time in lent and finally there is one more beautiful thing uh, that we can do is that finally that is for forgiving the people who are hurting us you know 
forgive your enemies. That's what God, Jesus has called us to do. So that is also, which is the most hardest thing to do. Uh, as you go through your daily life, be aware of the moments when people are, you know, kind of uh, stepping on your toes, irritating you, snapping you, uh, you know, ma making some comments. We are not talking about like really big things, you know, we are not talking about Russia <laughs> versus Ukraine or something. We are talking about things in our uh, circle, you know, in our day-to-day -day life where we can, we fall into, you know, keeping that grudge within ourselves. You know, this is a beautiful time to look at that and forgive them. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is all. So let us all pray for a few minutes, a few seconds. Lord Jesus, as we approach this beautiful season of Lent, as you give us, as, as you've given us this tradition of Lent, to reflect on our own lives, to reflect on the areas of our lives where we have fallen away from you, where we have moved away from you. Give us your grace, Lord Jesus. Open our eyes. Give your Holy Spirit to us so that we can identify the areas and take small steps to grow closer and closer to you during this Lent. Mother Mary, pray for us. <laughs>